When Sophie was born, she was perfectly healthy, wonderful, smiley, happy baby. When she was about nine months old, my son was eating peanut butter. And he said, Mom, can I give Sophie peanut butter? And I said, sure, she's supposed to be eating soft food. I'm sure she would love it. She just kind of stuck her fist into it and played with it. So a little bit later, I noticed that all of the places on her skin where we had to clean the peanut butter off it was all red and splotchy. That most children with a peanut allergy show up with the allergy in the first year or two of life, so it develops very early. About 20% of kids outgrow it, and the other 80% keep it, and the 80% who keep it, most of them have a severe type of allergy where even small exposures can be dangerous. So we learned um, about EpiPens, and we learned what foods to avoid. Well, I kind of lived in fear that like, what if I did eat something and I started having a reaction and no one would know what to do. Oatmeal chocolate chip. The hardest part of living with a food allergy is the fear that you have to go through and that your child has something that they could die from. And they're out of your sight and they're at a friend's home or a birthday party or another restaurant or school. You never, ever are completely, I was never completely at ease. You feeling okay? So the last time we were in Dr. Wood's office and he said that um, Hopkins was going to be uh, conducting this research study. The short name for the study is Peanut Sublingual Immunotherapy. And immunotherapy is um, a, a big word that really refers to what allergy shots are, which is a way to try to desensitize somebody to what they're allergic to by gradually exposing them to what they're allergic to. They have to find out exactly what your baseline is and at what point do you have your allergic reaction. So they, um, they give you what they call a, a peanut challenge. And I felt miserable, my stomach killed me. I literally, I think I sat over a trash can for like an hour just waiting for it to come up. And then my tongue was itchy and then later I broke out into hives, hives everywhere, like head to toe. It was the most awful experience. Yeah, so all of these uh, treatments revolve around the idea that if you gradually expose someone to what they're allergic to, their body might learn to tolerate that exposure. And it's taking advantage of an idea that this area under the tongue, inside the mouth, has got a lot of immune cells. It's a particularly rich environment. But in that space under the tongue, it turns out you can get a lot more bang for your buck. And the bang for the buck is protection against the allergy with fewer side effects. Well, it's taught me what I can eat and what I can't eat and how much, how close I can get to something before having to worry. I think the cinnamon actually helped it. What has happened from participating in this study is that she has developed a higher tolerance to peanuts. And so we don't now worry so much that she's gonna end up in the emergency room. I think it's given me a lot more freedom with my life. I don't, it's taken, out so much worry. I don't have to worry about going over to a friend's house or if we go out to eat. And I don't feel like held back and restricted as much. We are just so grateful to Hopkins for providing this opportunity and for treating Sophie and for treating, as, for treating her as well as they have treated her. And the Johns Hopkins Children's Center has literally been life-changing to me and I feel so lucky and blessed to be a part of this study. It's really changed my life. <laughs>